Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven. Today we're going to be going over Ada, the new Northern Realms cursed leader. But she has the spawn, you know, t mechanic on her to spawn a bronze or silver cursed unit. I didn't realize how many cursed units there were until I started researching this. Some of the things you can pull with her are going to be pretty busted. But most of the stuff, it's going to be pretty underwhelming to where you're just like... You, you just pulled 16 strength or, you know, at worst case scenario, 9 strength. I mean, are you going to play a 9 strength leader? I mean, I'm going to play her because... She's a new card, and I, I think it's great that Northern Realms is getting this, like, evilness to them. I think it's great. But, uh, I mean, I think where the problem lies is in the cards we currently have. The newer cards so far that have been revealed, I don't think will really help her out too much. But, uh, if you look at the new cards, or the cards we currently have, I mean, Arrakispore... You know, an 11 strength leader that ha that's going to ping once a turn. Not really. Berserker Marauder. Once again, your stuff has to be damaged on your side of the board. Um, well, you still... You still get them for the cursed units. This might be an okay... You know, if you got a bunch of them on the board, this might be a pretty good bomb. But, you know, once again, you got to have a bunch of them on the board to get the, the good value out of it. Botchling. Botchling's cursed. Do you, do you really want to pull one Botchling off your leader? Harold Houndsnout might be pretty good, though. Um, if you could play him into Frost or some type of weather where the, the skulls are going to die. You know, being able to pull an extra unit out on the board, especially if they're decent ones. You uh, you might be able to get something out of this one. I think where they're going to have to maybe make the change is taking, adding just loyal to it. Just no disloyal units can get pulled by this leader. Because um, I think the problem is going to lie where if you get Olderic or Iris, if you have a way to kill Iris... And you have two of them in your, like, being able to pull one with Ada and then another one from your deck. Um, if you look at what Frost Aerodin can do when they can pull multiple irises, it gets out of hand. Granted, though, you might you might run Yurden and not care. <laughs> Buff them up all day. I'm going to reset them anyways. Um, that's one thing I'll say about the new cards and everything. It's a lot of mind games. A lot of the neutral golds, they kind of like... They just make you think, you know what I mean? Does my opponent have this? Does my opponent have that? But, uh, yeah, being able to pull Iris is probably going to be one of those ones where you're going to be like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> this this is not good. Lubberkin, same as Botchling, just no. Morkfire, probably a decent pull. Being able to pull carryover with your leader is pretty awesome. Um... This is like, to me, this is like the middle of the road scenario where if you could pull, play Ida, Ida pull Morkvark, win that round and have carryover, it's probably going to be pretty good. Necromancy's on here. You can't pull spells, thank God, because I would be on the Dandelion show every week then. Um, Old Geared, same thing. Being able to pull carryover is great. Um, not as resilient as Morkvark, but still, it's... Uh, an extra silver in your arsenal that's going to have carryover. Probably going to be pretty good. Raging Berserker. It's, it's got to get damaged for you to get the, the decent value. I mean, 12 strength if it doesn't get hit. And even still, if it does get hit, 17 strength for a leader. Not really that great. Savage Bear, another one. It's, it's probably going to get removed if you play it. Um, there's a reason why there's no Savage Bears on the ladder right now. They just, they, they take too long to set up, and if they die, you're just out of luck. I mean, you might get a couple pings, and in some cases, damaging your opponent 
might benefit them in the long run. You know, it's just another one where maybe it might be okay, but not really. I mean, just to pull a seven strength card with your leader doesn't seem very good. Now, this is where it starts getting a little bit wacky. You know, if you could pull Skull, you know, you pull a six strength leader, five strength Skull, and then thin your deck in the process and maybe pull something that's, you know, going to be a home run for you. This is where it's it's going to be like, wow, that just happened. But to me, like, if you watch Northern Realms play their spies, you know, four or five of them in a row, it's the same thing. I mean, it's it's a combo. It, they pull it way, way more consistent. This isn't going to happen all the time. When it does, you know, good for you. You know what I mean? It's going it, to it, it's gonna feel bad to play against, but, you know, it's, it's not going to happen all the time. These other options are just not that great for a leader. This card, though, Toad Prince, I think would be really good to pull. Um, Northern Realms, especially when I play it, it just seems like I always have, like, one card I don't want in my hand. And if you're able to play this, get it out of your hand, and then possibly draw something that can help you, uh, this one this one would be really good to pull. Uh, I, I would definitely choose it, especially if my hand is kind of bricked or there's something I just don't want, you know, maybe round two or round three. Being able to draw an extra card is huge. So this one, like I said, these last three seem like where there's going to be the, like, game losing where you're just going to be like ah that just happened Ulderic, another one I don't think they should be able to pull or she should be able to pull disloyal units because uh, playing a six strength spy is just there's a reason why rain farm is so good so if if she can turn into a rain farm for northern realms it uh, it's, it's, it's going to be an ugly game for you Especially if you are down on cards and they're able to win, you're you're gonna cry. It's <laughs> it's gonna be bad. But uh, the new cards, I don't see that much of a problem with them. Um, I mean, your werewolves. The only way they're getting any type of buff, they they need the moonlight. You don't have moonlight, so. You know, a 16 strength leader, you know, 13 strength leader, not really that good. Striga, this might be the only way Striga is any good. <laughs> um, it, it might be okay to pull this uh, from Ada, you know, having an 11 and then damaging something for 8 that might remove it, a big threat, like a Enforcer or something. This might actually be the only way Striga gets played in by Northern Realms. Um, Vincent, it's going to be one of those things where if you're playing against an armored deck and you pull this, your opponent's going to instantly concede. You just ate all their armor. Uh, their their whole their whole buffet, you just tore it all down with Vincent. So while it's going to be hilarious when it happens, it depends on how big armor is going to be. And it really isn't that big right now. There's other cards that are better, so I mean... I wouldn't run it, you know, or I, I wouldn't pick it unless I'm going up against armor. The Cursed Knight might be okay. You can um, possibly get something little and make it bigger. So 6 and 8, you know, 14, and then whatever you transform. If you transform one of those little 3s into it, um, you know, you're gaining an extra 5. So 19. 19 seems like a decent a decent number. It's not great, but... You might be able to, with those three units, be able to start setting up for Commander's Horn. Uh, then the next one's Darren. He's going to have the the Wombo combo if you have Vandegrift in your deck. To where if you could play Darren, more than likely your opponent's going to know you have something that's going to damage something. There's no reason why you would pick this. They're going to be suspicious right off the bat, so... But if you don't have anything that can damage, Darren's probably not going to work out for you. 
at least an AOE damage to where you can get a big kaboom out of it. Um, Ruin, I mean, six and eight, you know, once again, you're at 14. And how many of these cursed units are going to get out of your deck for one? You know, you'd have to get at least five of them out of there. And even still, it's it, 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 this one's pretty decent. This is, this is another one where it's going to be a middle-of-the-road pull to where it's not going to be great, but you're not going to be, like, super sad about it. The Infernal Sorceress, you could pull play her right next to Ada. So, you know, 9 and 7, 16. Once again, you might be able to remove something that's going to give you problems, but just using your leader for that. I mean, it might be okay, but it might still stay on the board. Seven strength might not be enough to kill it. It might have been buffed in hand or something. Uh, Novellan, another one. Uh, if you're playing Eratuzas in your deck, for whatever reason, you know, you might be able to move them back into the the Frost over time. Or if you have Vandegrift, then you can move things into that Ragnaru row. But it's a lot of, like, what-ifs, you know. They changed the names of these, too. They were Damned Sorceress and something Mage. But now they're to be Bedeviled Mage. <laughs> Devil. Um, this one, though, if you don't have spells in your deck or items, you're going to be pretty, pretty mad. I mean, a 9-strength leader is going to feel super bad. <laughs> I think this is the worst-case scenario right here. But, um, I mean, like I said, going over them, they don't, they don't really seem, the, the bad seems to outweigh the good on the, the options. And, and even if they're not, they're not really that bad, it's just they're, it, it's, it doesn't have, it doesn't seem to have like that oomph like the other leaders do. Like full test, he's boosting your whole deck, you know, Henselt, he's pulling your machines or, your siege towers or whatever for a big boom and Radovid's able to lock you know stuff that you don't want to do damage or grow or whatever anymore it's like I don't know I think a lot of people are freaking out over this leader for the the worst case scenario but most of the time it's just going to be something pretty average but uh I don't know let me know what you guys think uh if there's any other cards you want me to go over like this I, I it's hard to make content with the current cards when you have you know really crazy stuff going on like this um but uh like always guys thanks for watching and i will see you next time